that's immensely cruel. Uh, but every place else has found a way to make sure that basic health services are available to every citizen. Let's recap again. In your opinion, based on your career in public health, what are the major problems with health care in America today that you find personally most troubling? The access to care is the first one. That's a moral issue. I've never understood it, and uh, it has always been difficult for me to understand why the rest of the country is willing to accept it. The high cost is a problem, and that has to be addressed. But something we haven't really talked about yet is quality as well, um, because we also have to address the quality of services provided in this country. On a zero to ten scale, with zero being the least quality system and ten being the best, how would you rank the American health care system? Well, that's a generalized question, and um, giving a generalized answer is risky, but I'll do it. Uh, I'm not sure where I'd put them on 0 to 10, maybe 7 or 8 in the world. Um, you have to understand that the World Health Organization has done a, a study of, of this issue. They have looked at healthcare systems around the world and have ranked them based on their effectiveness. Um, there are, we don't have time to go into all the issues that were considered in, in trying to determine what does effective mean, but certainly access to care and cost are major issues there. Um, the U.S. ranks 37th in the world, 37th in the world. France works, ranks first. Um, so it's clear from if you look at sort of unbiased outsiders looking at this, um, their assessment is that we're an outlier when it comes to the industrialized countries of the world. We're at the low end. We are an outlier in that all the other industrialized countries do better than we do. And yet, we spend more per capita on health care. Absolutely. We even spend, though we're ranked just under or over Slovenia, is it? Yes, something like that. Actually, we're ranked just two ahead of Cuba at 39. <laughs> so, and Slovenia, I think, is the next one. Um, Yes, we spend twice as much per person as our nearest competitor. Well, I, maybe that's not quite right. We spend maybe 50% more than our nearest competitor. If you average out the industrialized world and what it spends per person per year, then we spend about twice as much per person per year, and yet we rank at the bottom of the effectiveness so we're clearly not getting what we're paying for. There are so many different situations an American can find themselves in that it's understandable if there's no consensus among, among Americans. The poor have absolutely a tremendous need for help and aren't getting much. Mm -hmm. That's that group. Then you have the underinsured, those who barely have insurance but it doesn't cover enough. They have their problems. Then you have people who are in the military and people over 65 who are already in a system that's very protective mm -hmm. overall, that you can't really be thrown out. Mm -hmm. You're covered. Mm -hmm. Then you have people who have tremendous financial assets or mm -hmm. very strong financial assets, and they can pretty much buy what they want. But it's an interesting point that how the American system looks has very much to do with where you are in that entire span. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And... You can look at where the opposition is coming from to change. Uh, clearly, those who are making a good living off the current system would be reluctant to see it change. Um, many of those who could benefit substantially from a change system have been frightened to believe that a change system would not be good for them or for the country. And they've been convinced to speak and vote against their own best interests um, all too frequently, I think. Um, yes, it's an interesting conundrum in the United States. There are clearly those who are very concerned about a, um, a single-payer system, say, uh, for example, because they really do have a philosophic 
fear, perhaps, or at least a predilection to believe that government involvement in these things is not a good idea. Um, so could understand that they may philosophically object to something that involves more government. Um, we've also had a very skewed conversation about how it gets paid for. And I think most people don't realize that they're already paying extremely inflated costs in a variety of ways. Yet to use the word tax supported these days is a fairly risky phrase to use in the United States. But actually a tax supported single payer system would take less money out of your pocket and mine and everybody else's than the current system does. What are the big pluses for Americans for providing care to everyone in this country along the lines of what you've discussed? Well, any who are facing or at least considering the moral dilemma associated with this, it would certainly remove that as an issue. Um, it would improve health of a large number of people. It would diminish costs that the rest of us have in order to provide sort of late stage disease treatment for people who come into the system just when they have to and can't, af can't avoid doing it. Um, and it would, I think, in many ways uh, create a fairly level playing field that we could be proud of. For the providers, I think it would create a new set of incentives that would allow them to actually apply better what they know, particularly in the area of primary care. Um, I think we'd be much prouder as a nation of what we're doing than we can be now. Thank you for joining us today. Very interesting discussion with Dr. Bill Keck. Things to think about and ponder about. What do we choose to do as a nation today with care for all? Thank you for joining us. Arts Quest. We're on a quest to find the best arts in Northeast Ohio. I don't think I have the will to pull my company out of the hole. We're here today at one of the grand reopenings of the Cleveland Art Museum. Find Arts Quest on demand, Channel 501, under Lifestyles slash Arts. Hi, this is David Kettlewell, host of the Medical Matters TV show. I'm here with a close friend, John Wright of American Ramp Systems. John, tell us a little bit about wheelchair ramps. David, American Ramp Systems manufactures a steel ramp. It's an open mesh metal. It allows snow and moisture to pass through in the winter times, making it the most non-skid ramp on the market. We sell these ramps and we rent the ramps. We offer free home evaluations and they require no building permits. Very good. So when you need a wheelchair ramp, American Ramp Systems, freedom for life.